Johannesburg, someone said there is no easy walk to freedom. Today, in extraordinary scenes across this vast land of many peoples, races and tribes, millions of South Africans took the final steps in that walk. Today's predominant theme was the quiet dignity and patience of those who waited many long hours to vote for the first time. As Mark Austin reports, the spotlight fell fittingly on early voter ANC President Nelson Mandela. The moment Nelson Mandela has fought for for decades. 27 years in prison, a lifetime of oppression. Today, the vote that makes the sacrifice worthwhile. This is for all South Africans an unforgettable occasion. It is the realization of uh, hopes and dreams that uh, we have cherished over decades. And up with the sun this morning, millions of township blacks queuing to have their say in this country for the first time, relishing the chance to vote for change. Even my parents who have passed away have been wishing to see this one day, but they couldn't. But today I have voted for them. There are people who died for this. The most people who fought for this, they are not here. They couldn't take us to the promised land. But now here we are. For millions of blacks voting today, there's new hope for a new country. But the birth of the democratic South Africa continues to be a painful one. Johannesburg's International Airport, and these were the scenes of panic moments after South Africa's latest bombing outrage. The bomb was placed in a car just outside the departures hall. I'm sure could be in a... We saw it steaming. We told the cops that like, nobody did a damn thing. Dozens of people were hit by flying glass and debris. These shots were taken by a CBS camera crew who had just arrived at the airport. As security men moved to clear the area, baggage and trolleys were left abandoned by fleeing passengers. Outside, victims were treated by airline staff. Many were suffering severe shock. The blast caused widespread damage. Witnesses say a white man drove a car to the entrance of the departures hall and then ran away as the vehicle exploded. This evening, police released these pictures of a cache of military hardware found on a farm in the Western Transvaal. The hall includes elaborate bomb-making equipment, grenades, and an assortment of other weaponry. Police also recovered this improvised bomb, a metal cylinder that was packed with four kilos of explosives. They've arrested several members of the right-wing Iron Guard, the commando group belonging to the AWB of Eugene Terreblanche. Terra Blanche himself has not been detained. Archbishop Desmond Tutu was quick to condemn today's bombing. The work of frightened, evil men. And the answer to them was to vote. How does it feel? How does it feel? Great, right, great. Right. And voting they are, black and white together at the polls for the first time. Mark Austin News at 10, Johannesburg. It's impossible to underestimate the achievements of the last two days, but there were problems today too, teething problems on the difficult path to democracy. Some appeared so grave that they led Chief Mangosutu Butelezi of the Nkata Freedom Party to cry foul and to threaten to pull out altogether. But as our diplomatic editor James Mates reports, for the majority, voting today for their hopes and dreams meant in the main a day standing in lines, which in some townships seemed endless. Many had already waited a lifetime to vote. To wait in a queue for a few more hours seemed at first a small price to pay. But in Catlahong Township, three and a half hours after polling should have begun, it was clear something was wrong. The gates were still locked, there were ballot boxes, but no ballot papers. In dozens of polling booths the story was the same. Often there were none of the additional stickers on which supporters of Inkata have to put their cross. Inkata's leader, the Zulu chief, Butelezi, warned that if this continues, he may pull his party out of this election altogether. There's no way in which we can agree to what is being suggested now that our people uh, should 
just scribble IFP at the bottom of the paper without the IFP sticker. This is likely to be the most scrutinized election in history. 3,000 foreigners, 20,000 South Africans acting as monitors and observers. But the monitors are here in case of intimidation or ballot rigging. Teams like the one headed by Labour MP Diane Abbott are powerless against bureaucratic muddle or incompetence. By lunchtime, a line of would-be voters in Natal had spent five and a half hours in the sun, and still not one had voted. So serious was it becoming that President de Klerk, having cast his vote, ordered the Air Force to start delivering extra ballot papers and suggested voting may go into an extra day. If it is clear that substantial numbers of voters have not been afforded the chance, then we should obviously look with an open mind at the question as to whether we should not then extend the voting hours. By early evening, back in Catalahong, those who'd been waiting since morning began to force their way through. These Johannesburg townships were the front line in the battle for the vote. They weren't about to be denied now. If by late tomorrow there's still a backlog, this sort of scene could be commonplace. The booths will be staying open tonight. With the world watching, South Africa is desperate that this, of all moments, shouldn't turn to farce. James Mates, News at 10, South Africa. It's beyond doubt that in a few short days, Nelson Mandela's transformation from prisoner to president will be complete. But then the real work begins. I've spent the last few days in the townships and squatter camps reminding myself of the sheer scale of the problems ahead. The ANC promises rapid change. The people now expect it. Even though for a time last night the joy of the dawn of their freedom turned parts of Johannesburg into one big celebration. Last night, Johannesburg was drenched in champagne and euphoria. The party celebrating the birth of the new South Africa went on well into the start of the new day. But even as the revelers retired wearily to their beds, the spirit of the new age they were heralding was already being reflected in bold headlines in the country's most prominent black newspapers. Dawn today in reality. The people of Kailicha wait on the outskirts of their black township to cast their votes for freedom. They're unequivocal about what they want from that freedom. We can have uh, houses, everything. I think we can have everything in our lives. That man speaks for nearly 8 million black South Africans who desperately need to be housed. Nearly 3 million of them live in squatter camps. Some have been there for so long that they've acquired the bogus description of townships. They're places where squalor and misery mark all the boundaries of human existence. They are the legacy and the curse of a system which consigned huge population blocks to lives of unforgiving poverty. Erasing the blight of these townships will be the new government's number one priority. And when I spoke to Dr. Nathano Motlana, political activist and leading campaigner for equal rights, he said he saw the need for affirmative action but without the nastiest abuses of apartheid. We black South Africans don't threaten to do that kind of thing. But affirmative action is going to be practiced, it's going to be done. If necessary, we will legislate to enforce affirmative action. That hint of steely determination to tackle this country's most crushing problem was evident even as last night's celebrations ended with the new national anthem. There were unmistakable signals of a new assertiveness here, which indicates perhaps that black people will not allow their most basic social and economic aspirations to be denied for too long. It's much too tempting to make sanguine predictions about the future of this country. So much could go so badly wrong. Yet tomorrow should see the last votes cast in this historic election. Optimism here is now laced with caution and some anxiety. But South Africa has taken giant strides towards its new future. It may stumble, it may even fall, but it cannot turn back now.